watchmakers use drawings or manuals during the assembly. A watchmaker knows by heart where the hundreds of small parts have to be placed, what their names are, in which order they should be mounted, and what type of oil should be used for oiling. Nun ist die Uhr bei uns fertig gebaut und nun geht sie äh, noch zu einer Kontrolle. This is how the clockwork was assembled. All parts are hand polished. The clockwork has been assembled, taken apart and assembled again. It's oiled, tested and approved. Only one last thing is missing to mount the dial, hands and put the watch in its case. The tourbillon is the most coveted complication right now, and that's understandable when you see it. It's fascinating to see how all the small bits rotate. The tourbillon itself, that's what you can see turn around, consists of about 80 bits, which weigh a total of less than half a gram. Tourbillon means whirlwind, and the concept goes back to 1804. The idea was higher precision in the pocket watches of the time. Le tourbillon, il a été inventé à l'époque par Breguet pour compenser les erreurs dans les positions. Donc, euh, on sait que quand on met une montre normale, en, euh, suivant la position où elle est placée, on a de, plus ou moins d'avance ou de retard. Pour faire, euh, quand il y avait des concours de chronomètres, il y a eu l'idée d'inventer un tourbillon, c'est-à-dire que le, tout le mobile, il tourne pendant une ou deux minutes, ça dépend, même quatre minutes, ça dépend les réalisations, et ainsi il y a un brassage, disons, des, des positions, et ça nous donne une ligne beaucoup plus juste. Breguet's idea of the tourbillon is meant for a pocket watch that's carried in a vertical position. Nowadays, the watch is strapped onto the arm in many different positions. They took this into consideration at Jäger Le Coutre, and designed a gyro tourbillon. Quand on a fait le gyro tourbillon, c'était effectivement un défi. On a on avait fait des des, des complications, euh, disons, euh, euh, communes aux cinq ou six grandes marques horlogères de du monde, mais euh, personne encore n'avait réalisé un gyro tourbillon tel que celui-ci. On a travaillé avec un, un horloger ingénieur qui est chez nous, Eric Coudray, qui est un Coudray, euh, euh, disons, des, de, de, sûrement d'une famille des anciens horlogers de, de Blois, qui s'est installé euh, ici il y, a, il y a pas mal de temps, et qui travaille chez nous, et qui a reconstruit complètement de façon imaginaire ce, ce mobile, et tout est dans le... le, le Cette précision de fabrication dans cette, ce, cette conception, imaginer quelque chose qui tourne sur trois axes, c'est absolument euh, ludique puisque on n'arrive pas, c'est magique, on n'arrive pas à, à comprendre réellement comment comment ça tient, comment ça fonctionne. À chaque fois, c'est un miracle. À chaque montage de, de gyro tourbillon, à chaque fois qu'un horloger va assembler des pièces, au moment où il lance sa pièce, c'est un miracle. On a l'impression que C'est le cœur qui commence à battre pour l'éternité. The uncrowned king of watchmaking is Patek Philippe. No other timepieces are surrounded by so much prestige. The 14 most expensive wristwatches ever sold are from Patek Philippe. The most expensive wristwatch ever was sold at an auction in 2002 at a price of more than four million dollars. It was this world timer from 1946. The fact that it was this watch that was the most sought after in the world came as a surprise for Philip Stern. This watch is no, uh, not really so special, not so complicated. I think that the price went very high because you had two or three people people who want absolutely to have this watch, but from the technical or the complication point of view, I don't think this price is justified. Justified or not, that's how it is. Right now, 
the passion for the old watchmaking craft is greater than ever. The competition among the best makes is fierce, and the price is not the essential factor for the buyers. It's the prestige and aura that surround the watches. When you buy a Patek, you also buy a piece of art, and that's very important because the way how we finish our watches, it's not only uh, just to, to, to look nice, but it's also, of course, uh, for the, the watch has to last for more than 100 years. So when you buy a Patek Philippe, you, just, you don't buy it also for yourself. You buy it, I think, also as a, uh, I would say, a souvenir for the next generation. When watches are art, then the watchmakers are the artists. The patience and professional expertise that are put into every single watch require a rare degree of perfectionism. Watchmaking is like fine champagne. It's impossible to say which one is best. Watches have stamps and inscriptions indicating where and how they were made and how advanced they are. If you want the finest watches from Geneva, look for the Geneva seal. In order to achieve the Geneva seal, a series of strict technical requirements must be met. It says, for instance, steel parts must have polished angles, drawn flanks, and their visible surface smoothed down. Screw heads have to be polished or edged with angled slots and rims. We've arrived at the last bit of work on the Langer watch. The clockwork is assembled for the last time. It's tested and approved and is ready for the final touch, mounting the dial and hands and putting it in its case. The hands are rhodium coated gold, the case platinum. And that guarantees that it really sits fast, because it can't stand anymore. Ich hänge die Uhr hier auf, nachdem ich sie aufgezogen und abgelesen habe. Und wenn das über mehrere Wochen erfolgt ist, wird die Uhr an die Endkontrolle weitergeben, die die Uhr nochmal optisch und technisch überprüft. Und dann wird die Uhr versandfertig gemacht. At last it's ready. 390 components are designed, constructed, produced, polished, assembled, oiled and tested. The work is characteristic of Lange, with blue screws and red rubies in gold chatons. This is where we end our journey into the world of watches. This is how a fine timepiece is made today.